Maybe you remember Alexander Šapić from Serbia. Strong, very strong player with a very strong shoot. And uh, his specialization was with penalt in penalty shoot. He was on the five meter line, <laughs> buff, and shot was from three and a half. <laughs> yeah? Strong legs, and one movement, but body moves one meter. And one referee, Erhan Tulga, from Turkey, called him contra foul. Oh, <laughs> oh. And everybody, all the delegates said, correct, you are first who, who call this illegal movement because penalty is in, in rule is written, it's from five meter line, not starts from five, five meter line and finish on three and a half. S the same is with the shot behind five meter line. You can take the ball, you can shoot, but not move toward. Blocking of free throws. The defending player can attempt to block the shot from a free throw, like we saw in last example. Yeah? Most, of, most of you push the button, nothing, no foul, because defender was in correct position. But not impede the taking of free throw. It's easy for us if impeding is a tactic. Okay, last moment, so I know it's better if they will restart uh, and after free throw I touch the hand intentionally. So it's simple. I exclude the player and they restart man up. But sometimes it's uh, detail. Eh? Sometimes he splash, sometimes just, just push. So Im impeding is not allowed. To hold, push or kick the player who is shooting. To block the shot, especially from the side, before the ball leaves the hand or the shooting player. We, in this example, and also this, what is important for us? The player behind five meter line is ready to shoot. He's shooting and I can see, for example, two hands or some impeding or some push, or defender is too close, but before call, let's just look, is it goal or no goal? Because even with this impeding, with this illegal action of defender, if there is a goal, what is better? Goal. If they score the goal and we, no, no goal, exclusion because it was two hands. It, we must decide what is important to whistle, what is important to ignore. But if there is no goal and we saw two hands or, or uh, illegal blocks, so we must uh, repeat action with exclusion of a defender. To move toward or to fall on the attacking player with to block during the shot. According to water polo rule 19.2, a defending player having committed a foul should move away from the player taking the free throw before rising an arm to block a pass or shot. A player who fails to do so should be excluded for interference under water polo, water polo rule 21.5. And sometimes defender moves back, but hand is like this. No, it's, it's not good. First I have to move back and then I can, ri I can raise my uh, arm. If I move back and I, I block like this and he tried to shoot, it's exclusion. Yeah? Move back, hands up, one hands up, not two. Any questions? No, not yet. So far, no question. Penalty shot. Foul must be inside the five meter line. We discussed yesterday. It is not enough that the foul is committed near or on five meter line. Sometimes we have some doubts. It, was it in or on the line? In, fi in, in five meter uh, area or on the line? Referees must be certain that the foul was committed clearly inside five meters. If the referee is not sure if the foul was committed inside or outside the line, he should award an exclusion foul. 99% penalty is not penalty, 100% is not.
it is penalty. If we have some doubts, exclusion. Attacking player must be facing the goal. Center, I, I suppose we will have some discussion now. Center forward who has turned around, defender remained on his back, must be facing the goal completely. There is a situation close to penalty. But it is not enough if the center forwards turn to the direction of the side of the pool. He must be turned with the face, arm and body to the goal. In all other position, we must award exclusion foul and not penalty. Sometimes we say, okay, but he turned and he could, could score like this. And he was like this and it was close. No, until he is not facing, it's just exclusion. Leaving the ball from the hand. Until the ball is in the hand, it's nothing except brutality or violence. But when the player is holding the ball, clear, good, good position in front of the goal, nothing. We are waiting. So the defender cannot say, OK, I lost position, so he can do whatever he wants. No, I can compete. I can try to keep the ball back when he has the ball. What? But when he lost the ball, I, I can stop. Yes? Strike. Or, yeah, it's, for, for it, it's it's not it's not uh, intention is not to receive the ball. The, uh, the intention is to 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 kill. Yeah. Yeah. Puff. Okay. If if I, I just touch yes touch to, to because it's nothing. But if I it's strike sometimes player swimming, it's not not swim to to have the ball but swim like this. That's his exclusion. Yeah. If if I turn and he says okay. The ball is too far, so I have to break his uh, um, his penalty, yeah? Because the uh, intention is not to receive the ball. The intention is to, to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. But not penalty should be awarded if the player is holding the ball. Defensive player is not committing any foul, except brutality or exclusion with substitution, while the attacking player is holding the ball. So, until he has the ball, I can <coughs> compete. I don't want to say fight. I can compete. It's not enough that the center forward turns to the goal, turns to the goal and lifts the ball. Because so many times. A few years ago, in each game, we had 7, 10 penalties. Now, we can see 3, 4, maximum. Because sometimes, clever, smart center, turns, leaves the ball, and puff! I did my job. I received the ball, I turn, he is back, so if I leave the ball, because coach told me, leave the ball, then because if you hold the ball, there is nothing. I leave the ball, and referee, puff, penalty. Thank you, it's nice. I'm ready because I didn't lose so much energy, I'm ready to, to shoot. No, it's not enough. This is not penalty. Usually, in this situation, referee immediately awards penalty. It's a mistake. This is not according to the rules. We should wait a moment to give the opportunity for a defender to raise his hand. Of course, we, we cannot wait. OK, I wait, I give you the chance. Raise your hand, and then it's nothing. But we must decide if, after that, defender, OK, I lost position. I have to pray, maybe my goalkeeper is fantastic, but I cannot touch him. Then it's nothing. Because if he lost the ball, goalkeeper take the ball, finish. If he does that, there, then no foul is committed. The center forward must continue to play, must show the second movement, the continuously movement, to tr by trying to score the goal. If he stop it in the second, Movement by a foul, this is penalty. So if I turn, he's still holding me, and I lost the ball, and I try to move, it's immediately penalty. 
But if he stopped, touch me, block me, so door is open. I have to show intention to score the goal. If lazy player has no gift. Yeah. Intention to score a goal, intention to play. Attacking players must show the intention to play the ball, to score a goal. We cannot award a penalty just because the player is demanding a penalty. Sometimes, just leaving the ball from the hand is not a penalty. It is the same criteria as an outside position. When an attacking player is swimming to counter-attack, he is held by defender who immediately raises his hand. Maybe not, not uh, held by defender, but defender touch. Oh, it's dangerous because I can be excluded. And I show, I, it's better to stop, to show I don't touch him. OK, let him swim. Maybe I have still 15 meters, I can, I can swim. But if he touch and, and raise his hand, somebody, OK, exclusion, because you, you touch him. It's contact sport. We must decide if he holds continuously or just stop this foul. He must show the intention to continue to play, to swim, to score a goal. And we must teach, especially young player, don't wait for the whistle. I will see the major foul. If you continue to swim and he or she will hold you, I will exclude. If you stop, so you are lazy. No gift. And good pass, criteria of good pass, we know so. Sometimes if, if I'm center, I have good position and right wing is the, the ball. The pass comes. It's, it is a foul, but, hand, uh, but the ball is three meters high. No chance, even for Jesus walking on the, on the <laughs> water. It's, it's not, not, not easy to touch the ball, yes? But for me, so we must ignore this foul, nothing. Important criteria to award a penalty is correct and good pass. We don't award penalty foul if there is a bad pass, uh, even if the foul is committed. Clear. Because sometimes it happens. Uh, maybe for all of us, maybe for some of us. Pass, I, I saw, ah, <laughs> strong foul, but whoa. immediately puff. And oh my goodness, it was no chance to, to, to receive the ball, but we cannot. Turn back time. Yes? Is, is one of the things I see referees call a lot, and I'm not sure how to process it, is the idea is that if a pass is not perfect, it is a bad pass. Is there some range of good pass to bad pass? Is there, does the offense have to play perfect to get the call? OK. For me, the difference between perfect and very, and very good and good is I still have a chance to receive the ball. Perfect, so directly to my hand. Good, I, I can, it's, it's, I don't know, 20 half meter, if I would jump, I would take. But three meters from me, it's no chance to receive the ball. And even if I hold it, there's nothing. Yeah? So difference between perfect and very good. The criteria is, have I got chance to receive the ball to score? Or there is less than 1%, zero. Penalty shootout. I suppose everybody knows the procedure, but, but sometimes we have no extra time anymore. And if there is uh, the tie after the regular time, oh my goodness, how was it? How was it? Which side? Our rule says uh, there is an ordinary foul if a goalkeeper pass half distance line. If there is, if there is there any possibility during our game for a goalkeeper to pass? Half distance line? Yes, in penalty shootout. The, the goalkeeper changed end, changed end. Yeah? There is one question in, in examination in my country. No, no, rule says no. Hey, there is one. There is, there is one situation in penalty shootout. If the game ends and requires a penalty shootout, then the following conditions must be at heard. Goal judges should be dismissed. The full responsibility is in our hand. And uh, 
believe me, it's very, very important because in the beginning of the period, the consequences is, okay, false start, which is not so important. It's not good because now, even if we have goal judges, both of us control the start of period. I am on between two and five uh, meters line on the goal uh, jury table side. I control, hey, move, move back, and I look on my colleague. He control second team. If his signalization is okay, I restart. If something wrong, okay, false start. But in penalties, the, the, the criteria is the same. No goal judges. One of us is on goal line, second on five meters line. It depends, right or left hander. And I'm ready, if I'm on five meter line, I'm ready. It's better to show the player, wait, the goalkeeper. And I observe goalkeeper. I will show you later in, in on, the, on the picture. And I must observe my colleagues. His arm is like this. Never, he never used whistle. Never, ever used whistle. It was the situation in European Championships in Malaga. Very important game. Last period, close result. One referee on the five meter line during penalty and second or goal line. When th this one was ready, he blow the whistle and second one, tit, 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 to goalie. Goalie turn, it was a goal. No goal, no goal, sorry, we must repeat. They repeated, it was no goal. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> if you are on a goal line, during regular time or during penalty shootout, you never use whistle. Just whistle in your pocket, move, move, move. And I, look, I observe his hand. Not good, not good, not good. I can whistle. Hey, goalie, move back. In regular time, it's easier. Move back. After first warning, if not, exclusion, please. One player go to the goalie. During penalty shootout, rule says, OK, we, must, we can exclude the goal, goalie. But it's, it's not good. We have time. Back, back. Hey, back. It's OK. My colleague control. Buff. We start. So no. Goal judges, we have full responsibility. Coaches of board teams should nominate five players who will be part of the penalty shootout. Goalkeepers can be replaced at any time during the taking of the penalty shots with the replacement which has logged on the protocol before the game. Both goalkeeper will change ends. Yeah? Usually, uh, re referee blow the whistle for the goal. If there is clear, if there is no doubt, goal on the goal line, then the second referee must whistle because it's, that's why he is on the goal line. For me, it's not so easy to decide was it full or half. Well, inside. that's why in this moment the, the referee on the goal line must blow the whistle. Goal or if not goal, I, I don't whistle. Nothing. Yeah? Number of cups of the five shooters will be put in order on the list, which cannot be changed during the taking of the penalty shootout. So, we cannot wait for the delegates, hope they must help us. No, we must go to the coach, to the coach, especially referee on the mm, bench side. Please prepare five players, please prepare five players. Then second referee can bring me some paper. Okay, which? Number three, five, seven, seven. Okay, this order, this order. You, you. Okay, captains, coin. And if we play indoor pool, it's easy. White caps, blue caps, <laughs> so teams stay in your side. Goalie, change ends. Shoot, 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 shoot. It's, it's a long distance for referees, yes? From one to the other side. We, ha we have to be ready. But sometimes in outdoor pools, we can decide, okay, we will execute the penalties on only on one goal. I had the situation last year in Final Six in Barcelona, Partizan Reco. It was a tough game because, you know, Reco. It's a bi big Reco, eh? And Reco played terrible. In regular time, was 12-12. And penalty shoot out. And because of sun, because of wind, I decide, OK, we will shoot on one goal. And all the players from uh, Partizan, OK, all the players, no. 
almost all the players from Reco, okay, only one goalie, why, why, why? Okay, it's my decision, finish. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in this situation, it's a little bit different procedure because on the bench side, it was partisan side, okay, five players must be behind the goal line in this side, the rest of them must sit on the bench and the players from other team must go to the opposite side because if they will be close to the bench it's <coughs> dangerous, quite complicate our life. Send them to the opposite side, goalkeepers change and if there is a part, uh, white team is uh, shooting so the goalkeeper is there and then goalkeeper is close to his team behind the goal line and then we change, easy. Easy. So always decision is in our hands. Yeah? We have full responsibility. If we see the sun, if we see the wind, it, it's not the same criteria. This, this uh, play was, eh, but during the game we were playing on both sides. Yes, two periods on this, two periods on this. <laughs> but in penalties, shootouts, you, have, you must have the same criteria, both. No player who was excluded during the game for exclusion with substitution, brutality of trip or three personal fouls can participate in the penalty shootout. It's easy. Penalty shots will be taken or both goals or not. Players on the list will remain in the water in their half of field at the halfway uh, line. It's too far. Behind five meter line because if they will be on the, it's not full like in football on halfway line. It behind five meters so we, we don't want to lose time. All other players and officials of the teams must remain seated on the bench, and it's important. Of course, full of emotion, they're standing, they're, they're holding each other, it's, it's not bad. A teams that shot first will be determined by throwing a coin, and it's important. We call uh, captains and we make a draw. Pardon? Okay, now collaboration between referees. Any questions? No? And uh, it, it's, it's easy to say coin, but if we want to do like this, okay, others, you score first, Revers, you score first. Buff, others, you score first. No, it's not good. Others, you are others. What do you, you choose? You want to score first or second? Second, okay, your choice, so you score first. Give them the possibility to, to, to choose. The two referees are that are responsible for the game must work together as a team and not as in individuals. They are not two separate referees, but one referee in two person. Before the game, they must discuss how to control the players in the game. Yeah? Discuss the criteria and level of the game. This criteria and level must be the same from the beginning until, until the end of the game. It's the worst situation if referees decide which criteria will exist because I will count the number of personal foul. Oh, just three and four. It's too few. I must whistle more in last period because it doesn't look good. Just three and four personal fouls. No, maybe if seven and eight is better. No, if it was just three and, and, and four, it was. 2003 in Calgary, World Women Junior, the final game, gold medal game, USA, Canada. Regular time, result 3-3. Three, three. Personal fouls? Three, three. Fantastic game. Full of actions, movement, emotions, maybe not a goal. Because three, <laughs> three and three. <laughs> extra time, one, one. And one extra mm, personal foul in each team. And then penalties, penalty shootouts. Excellent game, excellent game. And just four personal foul on each side. And nobody complains because it was hard game, but Fair. So if somebody think, oh, just three personal foul in gold medal game, I must whistle more. No, it depends. Opposite situation, after third period, oh my goodness, 
15 and 14 personal foul. In last period, I will not whistle any exclusion because it doesn't look good. And then war starts. <laughs> Control the goals, balls, and field marks, as we said yesterday. Why goals? Why goals? Sometimes we are on, on in the pool 45 minutes before the game. Okay, seven balls, field marks, okay, two goals, we are ready. We start the game, we are on five meter line and we see the goal line is not like this, but like this. Stop, please, check it, repair it. Another situation, first minute, first action, shot, we show the goal. And uh, goal just said, no, it's goal throw, it's a uh, hole in the net. Oh shit, I didn't check. Why? We have time. We have 40, minimum 45 minutes before the game. Let's walk. Check if some, something is wrong. Please, and goalie, please check it. Oh, hey, organizer, please repair it. Another one, this. Mar field marks, check everything. Then we can feel comfortable in the beginning of the game. Check the players. Swimsuit, grease, nails. Especially in summertime. Uh, before Barcelona, it was a uh, friendly tournament in Greece and team of Serbia, senior team of Serbia, before the game against I don't know who, I checked them, oh, all of them, sun, sunblock. What is this? Hey, it's just friendly tournament, it's nice weather. <laughs> okay, after the game, now go to the shower. Before the game, if I will find it during the game, the only chance is exclude with substitution, with immediate change. Why? It's my, some, some colleagues of mine said, okay, they are professional, they must know, they must know, they must cut nails, they must uh, take a shower. Okay, but before the game, we have time. Let's make our life easier. Check, okay, something wrong. I like to, because uh, I'm from Poland, so Slavian, language. I can, I can speak Russian, I can speak Serbian, Croatian, and sometimes when I have uh, m the game of uh, team from this part of Europe, during warm-up or just before presentation, I say a few words in their language. Okay, I understand your language, so if, if you want to say some <coughs> incorrect <laughs> word to the referee, please, I understand. And okay, hey, he speak our language, be quiet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> why not? Why not? With, with smile, because during the game there's no time to, to smile, love, we have control the game. But now, before, why not? Check the benches and team officials. Why benches? I told you. Second set of caps. Be ready with this. Just three officials of the bench, the same uniform. Sometimes we start the game, oh, it's four. And, and one of them has completely different uniform. Signalization. Clear and correct signalization is very important to avoid any misunderstanding by the players, coaches and spectators. Not like this, not like this, not like this. Clear signalization. Yeah? The referee must use different sounds of the whistle for an ordinary foul, contra foul, exclusion and a penalty. So, it's our language communicate with the players and coaches. Both referees must use the same signals. It's very, very, very important. In the case of an exclusion, the referee must first show the number of the excluded player to the excluded player, then to his colleagues, and then to the jury, jury table. Because especially when the ball is outside, I stop and there are two center forwards. If I wish the you out, then can be confusion, both the swim out. No, wait, seven, out, then, then, there is, then is a time to have eye contact with the player. Me? Yes, you, seven, seven, out, to my colleague, to jury table. If both left, stop, no, 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 you in. It's misunderstanding, you in, only seven, because if we, they leave the water, M maybe he understood, okay, I did a foul. He, <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't know, but he, he did a foul. So it's time to correct. In the case of a double exclusion, the referee 
must, not can, must ask the ball for the ball to clarify the situation to the players, coaches and the jury table. It's not allowed, okay, it's clear those two players wait and puff, puff and start because they can start before the end of our signalization. If there is double exclusion, call the ball, you, you, out. Number seven, number nine, okay, wait a few seconds, she left or he left, puff, okay, you restart. Any mistake or misunderstanding must be clarified in cooperation between two referees. This example, number seven and seven and nine left the water. No, no, stop. Nine, please go in. Only seven. Mechanics of refereeing, collaboration and communication. In the beginning of the game. So, as I said, net in the goal, field mark, Referee from the jury table, balls, pressure, wet enough. The second referee also marks and benches. Okay. Before start of the period, it, maybe it's funny but this is my habit to count the players before restart of the game, after the goal is uh, normally, but in the beginning of the period. But I trust my, to my partner, to my colleagues, he do the same. Because before the start, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I check, is it six players on the bench. If there are six, it's so everything is okay, because sometimes it's seven and one is under the water. So if there is five on the bench and it was not red card, wait a minute. Okay, one in, okay, no, 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 one must leave, oh, sorry. Seven, seven, I start from last word, championships, Barcelona. I had the game, Hungary, Kazakhstan. Third period, Hungary on my side, one, two, three, four, five, seven, six players on the bench. Okay, ready, my colleague, puff, puff. They started, 20 seconds, and one Hungarian player, referee, there is eight players in Kazakhstan team. <coughs> Give me the ball, captain, and decision. Bravo. Only, it was mistake of referees, both referees. I, I, I don't want to say it was mistake of my colleagues, both of us, because maybe I should see in 20 seconds there is something wrong. But if they call me, hey, there are eight players, okay, sorry, gentlemen, our mistake, we must restart. 20 seconds back and we restart. But then I ask my colleague, with good experience, hey, why you didn't count? I don't know, I always do it, but I, I forgot. So. Both referees must control the goal line, check the number of players and be sure that the player swimming for the ball didn't push off from the goal. I like, yes? It's, it's not allowed. No. I always ask, hey, I want to see your hand. And the player in the goalie, look, look some, some referees are hunting. Hey, I will not tell him, I will not show him, I will wait for the moment because I'm sure he will push off. You push off, puff, contra, <laughs> I got you. No, I like, hey, I'm here, I observe you, don't do it. Okay, look, my leg, and it's really easy, it's really simple. And some players are holding the, the line. Hey, move back, I want to see your hand. Because one meter, in the beginning of first period it's not important, but sometimes when in the end of the first period is some exclusion and they are really <coughs> fighting for the ball because maybe timeout, maybe uh, equal. So it's very important. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. The, it, the player cannot push off from the goal, from the line, from nothing. Must start in correct position. So, 
I focus on the, the player. If if there is a basket in the in the in the middle, yes. Sometimes I throw the ball, so it's, it's also good to show. Hey, I will throw the ball two meters from the line. Referee A, jury table side, wait for his partner's signalization. One hand up. Referee B gives this signal when both goal judges. Goal judges are not important in the moment because we decide. If there is only one referee, it, maybe it happened in your youth or children competition, one referee and two goal judges? No. <laughs> no. Sometimes, sometimes. Okay, but if, if the situation is like this, so there is only one referee and two goal judges, then referee must look at the goal judges. It can happen in some, sometimes, but it shouldn't. But if there are two referees, they control. They, they don't, don't look on the, on the goal judges because they control the players. So, because suggestion, many, because many players start to swim immediately when referee B, this one, gives the signal, yeah, they are clever. They are waiting for him, not for the referee with the whistle. If, hence, it's up, they start to swim. So it's better, hey, I whistle. My colleague put hands up, I wait, puff, I start. So, eye contact and we decide. Start of the period. It's not enough to blow the whistle and wait. Okay, I restarted the game. Because sometimes, some players during swim off help each other <laughs> in the end. So, if I start and I go, okay. Let's play. It's not correct. Follow the swimmer, and I have to observe, control everything. If it's push, OK, I can observe. If we, even with this, they didn't receive the ball, I can ignore it. But if they have a ball, sorry, push, change of position. During the sprint, both referees must pay full attention to swimmers, because sometimes other player can push the sprinter to help him. This is not allowed. Okay. Restart after a goal or after timeout. Both referees are on half distance line. It's important. It's like uh, Bible. Both of us must be on half distance line. I cannot be here. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm checking from this. No, no, because I'm waiting for your body language. If you are on goal, half distance line, this means you are checking everything with me. If you start to move, it's clear signal for me, everything is okay, I can restart the game. But if I will trust only to your decision, it's not enough. Both of us must control. Referee A, jury table side, must control number of players in the water and both benches. We have time. They change the players. So why in also in the benches? Sometimes we can see, okay, there are six players and goalie, but on the bench, just four. Okay, one is swimming behind. Where is one? Oh, he was here. If I restart, complication. We must restart again. Referee B must check number of players in the water and their correct position also on the benches. So everything is under control. They are changing each other. So, benches. If everything is correct, also after 45 seconds of timeout, attacking referee, in this case, this one, I don't know why there is no B and A, goes right. And this is clear signalization for me, so if he starts to move, I can restart the game. Okay, I observe him, he moves right, I restart the game. Penalty shot. Warning. Before and during penalty shot, only one referee in this situation, referee A from the jury table side, can use the whistle. Example from Malaga. Referee B works only with hand signalization without whistle. Whistle is necessary as you ask if after shot is a goal or no goal. I have to decide because I am on the right position, I can decide goal or no goal. Before penalty, I can just signalize no, no good, no good, no good, it's okay. 
So he controls uh, goalkeeper position on the goal line, and if it's okay, hands up. If not, still in horizontal position. There is a, there is a, if, if, if still my colleague shows back, 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 and without whistle, I have to use whistle. Hey, first warning, move back. Okay, I'm ready, and he's still back, back. Thank you, goodbye. One player can go to the goalie without privileges of goalkeeper, and we restart. Referee A on this picture must control. If the scorer is in correct position, so on five meters line, sometimes it's a little bit closer, so sorry, it's five meter, move back. No one from defending team is closer than two meters from penalty shooter. I told you yesterday, before the game, just talk with the captains. Hey, if there is a penalty shot, it's a mistake of defense. Yes? Yes. Okay. Nobody can change the decision. Let the scorer shoot. So every defender must be minimum two meters out of him, of her. And I don't want to lose time during the game and whistle 10 times. Please, two meters, please, two meters. If after first warning you will continue, it's disrespect and I will exclude with substitution. Is it clear? Clear. Okay, share it, tell it to your team. And then during the penalty, hey, Two meters. And usually captain, hey, move back. Two meters. Finish. If the goalkeeper is in correct position, I blow the whistle. During penalty shot on some defending player, disturb touching or kicking the shooter. It's also important, yes, because even if he's two meters from the player, sometimes he's splashing and if there is a goal, it's a goal. If not, we must repeat and exclude the player with substitution. Okay. During the attack, this is important point about collaboration. Yes? So, even on a penalty throw during play, not the penalty shootout, but a penalty throw during play, two referees, one at the goal line, one at the five? It should be like this, especially when uh, home team and uh, local goal judges. I don't want to say they are not objective, but it's better, it's better to, to be here and to, there is a goal, there is a field of play. To stay like this, yes, because I have to see everything. I have to put focus on the goal line, but if there is no goal, I have to see and run to the attack. But if there is some big competition, they are neutral goal judges, so during regular time it's not so important. If the game is easy, you can help your colleagues on the goal line, but if the game is difficult and everything can happen in from five perimeter, so it's better to stay and observe the players. We must, we must feel. Uh, a few words about this, this collaboration, because it doesn't exist. My water, your water. Referee in attack, this one, must pay full attention to the center forward position and two players in first line just in front of him. In maybe also those two, but this is strategic point. And referee in defense, referee B, must control the rest of the players especially. He must help his partner in the first line close to him if there is contra foul if there is something else, especially here in the first line, if we speak each other before the game, hey, if I am here, I trust you because it's too far from me. If I will be here, you can trust me because I will help you. You remember, there are two zones which the coaches know, hey, you as referee, you don't, don't observe this, this area. There is just five meters from this referee, especially if he moves to five meter line. And, uh, but even 18, sometimes 20 meters from his partner. He's not allowed, referee on this side, to decide, it's not my zone, it's not my water, I will not decide. Because in this case, activity of this referee is very, very important for both of them. To show, hey, we control everything. Every single place is under control. 
So something is here, contra foul. I am just five meters from this action, and my colleague has to decide one, two pairs, and it's so far, far. And maybe yes, maybe no. If I trust my colleagues, he gives decision. Center forward facing the right hand side. So it's not so easy for me from this side to see what happened if the center turns right. But for my colleagues, he can see very clear. Huh? Is it ball under, especially? Is it pulling back, sinking? And also, it's necessary to collaborate and help each other. Ball in front of attacking referee. This situation happened to me also in a game with Boris, together with Boris. Important game, doesn't matter which one. Boris was here. And he didn't uh, stand off two meters line, he was on five meters line, and action was just in front of him automatically referee will control this action because it's one meter from him, so he must focus on those two players. And this moment, he lost control in the center forward. And in this place, what happened? The center forward tried to move to find good position, and it was, uh, as you said, even for Stevie Wonder. Yeah? <laughs> it was... Uh, how, uh, exclusion foul for Stevie Wonder. I blow the whistle, I make it, made a call, I exclude the player, no doubt from nobody. And Boris said, thank you, because I couldn't see. I know, because I observe you, where the ball is, the ball was under your uh, legs, so you look down, so I cover rest of the field. Thank you. Welcome. Help me, the same. So, as I said, sometimes he must turn left. It's, it's not good if he turn left. It's better if he move back and look down, but also control center forward. In this moment, he can lose control in the center forward. We spoke about it. So, this place is without any control. This situation is very important for both referees. Show real responsibility of referee B, of both of them. Seeing his partner turning to ball posi position, he must control the center forward position to help his partner in, ca in case of any foul there. Believe me, if there is an exclusion foul and if this referee make a call, the coach will not complain because it was foul. If nobody will call the foul, then we <coughs> can hear this coach. Simple. So. If the tactic is to play with two centers, we can share the responsibility. I observe, as uh, Steve said, those three pairs, and my colleague must observe those three pairs. One center for him, one center for me. Because it's, uh, they are so, it's so crowded here, and sometimes it's difficult to see in the second uh, center position. Was it foul? Was not foul? What was it? What ball under? So don't uh, be afraid to whistle from this side. Pressing. Also, we must observe all the players. Look, it's, it's, it's another situation. This referee move back to see all the, those players because if they play pressing, sometimes they're holding each other too much to prevent uh, the, the movement. Counter-attack, it was in the beginning, so this one observed first line. Counter-attack again. In the morning, I, I, I have found some situation about this. Exactly like this, it happened to me. Four pairs were on this half, two on this. So I was here. I was here and I was walking because it was not so easy. They didn't swim like a friend. <laughs> they were trying to, one of them tried to provoke exclusion, second one tried to provoke contra foul. Okay, I, I had to be close. And my colleague <coughs> was here. 
and those four were, was, were already closer. And ball came here, those two players were here. He blow the whistle, give the foul, then I was on half distance line. Player took the ball, shoot, and after that my colleague looked at me and Believe me, I didn't feel well. Because what can I do? What can I do? Who is responsible even if there is static action? One is here, second one is here. Who is responsible to decide was it, was it correct position to shoot or not? Who blew the whistle. Exactly. Exactly. Because sometimes the attacking referee is close to five meters, and he blows the whistle. And he must decide. He cannot push the responsibility. Hey, you are defending, you must decide. Because in this moment, maybe I observe these players. Maybe something happened here. If I blow the whistle, I must decide, correct or not correct. And I will not tell you which game, in which game it happened. But I said, OK, because if we start to discuss, Goal, and the final result was one goal difference. Th this team won. It, we, are ha we are happy because no one coach remembered this situation, and no, nobody complained. But I knew, I knew, and I felt not so good because I knew this situation was important for the game. It was illegal goal. And extra men. Also, all the players must be under control. Uh, it was a long, long discussion in last European about two meters. If during extra men action or regular action with uh, six and six players, one player, for example, this is from attacking team. He decides to change the wing. And he starts to swim behind center forward. Here, we must whistle two meters. We must whistle two meters. Because rule says it's not allowed to be in two meters area without a ball. And this movement disturbs for goalkeeper, for sure. Another situation during man up. Sometimes this player, ball is here, and this player is standing inside two meters. If he moves just for a few seconds and moves back, OK. But if he is standing on one meter, we must blow the whistle, because we must call, because it, it's in front of goalie. He cannot see an action. Another situation, if, if one player is standing here, OK, it's passive player. If he receives the ball, then we can call two meters. But if he is out of action, it's not important. But here, we must whistle two meters immediately, especially swimming behind the center forward. Another situation also, we observe everything. I am on the last uh, player line. I observe those three players. My colleague on two meter line is very important to, to see two meter line during uh, man up and uh, re-entry area also, also here. And a few words about f new FINA rules. So I think we know now we have 11 players and two goalkeepers. If one team decides to play with just one goalkeeper, can they play with 12 field players? No. If they decide to play with one goalkeeper, they can play with one goalkeeper and 11, 11 field players. OK. At any time in the game, player must be may be substituted by leaving the field of the player entry area and so on. The substitute may, may enter the field to play from the reentry areas as soon as the player has visibly risen to the surface of the water within the reentry area. If a goalkeeper is substituted under this rule, it must only be by the substitute goalkeeper. The interesting situation was in Budapest. Game Russia-Georgia with specific taste. 
And the last period, Georgian team, five field players and two goalkeepers. Yes, one in the water and one on the bench. The rest of them were excluded with substitution, one for brutality, okay. And the coach asked, okay, can my second goalkeeper change the cap and play as a field players? No, no. And what, what in the case if one more player from the field were excluded? Then there is only six players left. Huh? The player with le less than seven players can play without goalkeeper. Yeah? But they still had seven players. Five field players, goalkeeper and goalkeeper. So they couldn't change goalkeeper to the field players. Okay. This we know, I, don't, I think it, it, it was important to, to, to speak just uh, after Barcelona. So there is no extra time anymore and uh, for periods of eight minutes each about break, penalty shootouts. I don't know what is the system in your country with uh, mm, timeouts on the scoreboard. Is it one, two, three and four or in each period just one or zero? Because I suggested in LEN, in Europe, it's the best in each period reset on one or zero because then in fourth period coach if if he see two two but did i take in this period or, or in last period one or zero okay i have no more time out in this period zero i still have time out i don't know the system in your country is it like this one or zero <laughs> okay Yes, it's very simple for, for the coaches. Even if there is impossible to change the system, computer system on the scoreboard, sometimes we can use like in basketball. Basketball, if there is, um, uh, I don't know how many fouls and, and for the free throws in, in NBA, but in, in FIBA, after fourth personal foul, there is uh, some mark on the jury table, so referee after the foul, oh, uh, free throws. So maybe you can use it, something like this. I, I don't want to suggest something, but it's, it's easy for coaches. Zero, oh, I still have time out. One, no, no more. In FINA rules, each team may, may request one time out in each period of play. The duration of the time out should be one minute. And the same like break between first and second and third and fourth is two minutes and after two minutes we must restart the game not after two minutes we okay let's play and then one minute they are going to the position after in timeout after 45 seconds is the signal you can swim and it's important for referee because we will not whistle ordinary foul and exclusion foul but exclusion with substitution or brutality we can whistle in these 15 seconds because there is a contact between players. After 45 seconds, there is uh, the horn. Okay, you can swim. And then we must focus on the players because sometimes something can happen. Yesterday, somebody of you asked me, can, can the player from the water ask for timeout? Yes, he can, but I will not go. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? If he, instead of playing, he wants to show me the signal, yes. Uh, the timeout might be re may be requested at any time, including after a goal, by the coach of the team in possession of the ball, calling timeout and signalizing to the secretary or referee with the hands forming a T shape. Sometimes it's so noisy. And we cannot hear time out, but looking at the referee, uh, at the coach with the signalization, it's, it's easy for us. But the player in the water, if I, if I see the signalization, then I look at the, at the coach. It helps me. But I will never whistle. Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. 
Uh, a player awarded a free throw shall, shall pay, put the ball into play immediately, including by passing or by shooting, if permitted by the rules. It should be an offense if a player who is clearly in a position most re uh, readily to take a free throw doesn't do it. It's a, like wasting time, yes? A defending player having committed a foul should move away from the player taking a free throw before raising an arm to block or pass or, sh or shoot. A player who fails to do so should be excluded for interference and, uh, under Water Polo Rules 21.5. So, first move back, then hands, hand up. Waste time. Yesterday there was some question in discussion panel. It is always permissible for a referee to award an ordinary foul under this rule before the 30 seconds possession period has elapsed. If the goalkeeper is, it's the simple, if the goalkeeper is the only player of the team in that team's half of the field of play, it should be deemed wa wasting time for the goalkeeper to receive the ball from another member of the team who is in the other half of the field of play. It's simple. But in the last minute of the game, the referee must be certain that there is intentional wasting time before applying this rule. In last minute, and also if the result is three, four goal difference, and one team, okay, we'll play wasting time because we, we just want to control the, the ball, play back, play back, then we can whistle, okay, change possession, wasting time, you play too long, incorrect. To simulate being fouled. Discussion, yeah? <laughs> but dear friends, why are we afraid to show yellow cards? Because next step is to show red. But if rule is clear, if there is a simulation, clear simulation, because uh, in this video I saw two or three simulation and it was good, so referee didn't whistle. It was not advantage. But this example I show you. So after change of position, I am first attacker. I swim. The ball is in front of me. I can swim and I, I can continue. And I stop and helicopter and the defender, hey, what is he doing? <coughs> then me as a referee, I have to whistle contra foul, change of possession and show without any figure. <laughs> just, just yellow card. I don't accept this. Because we, thi we think too much. Oh. In next step, I have to show red. But it's not my problem. It's not my problem. If they don't understand, if they continue like this, of course, if there is no influence for the game, I can ignore it. But in this situation, clear simulation, I have to stop it. OK. No, no, first. Stop, contra, and yellow, yeah? Stop. It's change of possession with yellow card for you and your team. Restart. And I, I did it. I did it um, not 100 times, three or four times it, 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 it occurred. And after that, they really stopped. But if they continue, I must be consequent. No? Uh, stop, exclusion with substitution, and red. Have you ever done that, given the red card? Red? No, 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 not yet. So the, the, yellow, the yellow has stopped? Yes. But sometimes we're afraid to show the yellow. Why? And, and there are some questions from the coaches. Uh, yeah? Uh, I've heard the coach from Sandro Campania. <laughs> to referees not personally to me. Hey, we have rule about simulation. So many players play si simulation. Why we never see yellow card? We continue. We continue. Yesterday we, we, we were discussing. First period, teams play against each other and play against us to check what is the limit, what is the criteria. Hey. Time out. Okay, let's change the tactic because it's not allowed. Those referees don't let us to play like this, like this. We must play another way. 
because I am a coach, I observe this, this, this. Okay, no, 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 it's not allowed. I understand the, 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 the limit, the criteria. Let's change the, the play. Uh, this rule is now with major foul in pit, uh, or otherwise pre prevent the, the free movement of the an opponent who is not holding the ball, including swimming on the opponent's shoulders, back, or legs. Holding is lifting, carrying, or touching the ball, but does not include dribbling the ball. This rule can also be applied to advantage the attacking team if a counter-attack is in progress and a foul is committed which limits the attack the offending player should be excluded. And this rule doesn't say anything about half or this half. Every time, if I want to swim to counterattack and somebody is holding, sinking, uh, impeding, it's, it's a moment to exclude. To use two hands or to hold otherwise tackle an opponent anyone in the field of play. It was also discussion and General, I don't have to see two hands of the defender if he is not holding. Just, just be in position because if the center or another player receives the ball, I don't have to see. Hey, my hands are here. No, just you can you can have your hands in the water. It's enough for me to see your hands or to see one hands you try to to receive the ball, and because. So many times players have the hands like this, okay. And then the attacker try to pass or shoot, her hands are still here. And no reaction. And it's, it's not correct. It's not, it don't have to be like this to block. But if two hands like, are like this, it's not correct. It must be exclusion. <coughs> this... Uh, about the foul of, uh, f field, uh, half, half of the attacking team. Yesterday we discussed, yes? It's, it's clear. Not every call is exclusion. We must decide. Is it important for counter-attack or rest of the player are in static position? And this one is just, j just decide. I will not pass the half distance line because maybe somebody will attack me and it will be exclusion. And I will wait here one meter before half distance line. No. If the player is standing close to me and they try to block, it's nothing because there is no foul. If he attack me, it can be ordinary foul, not exclusion foul. But if my team is swimming and I decide, okay, I will stop him, buff as a tactical foul, it's exclusion immediately. And it's, it's good to show the half distance line, then everybody understand. I, when the rule changed, I was working with myself to, to learn new habit. When I am attacking referee, uh, when change possession, I'm attacking referee, I go and I stop on half distance line. And I wait until most of the player will pass and then I continue my movement. Because sometimes, may maybe you know, but in the beginning, uh, I had a problem to remember this rule. Oh shit, it was a foul on the, this uh, half. Ah, it Yes, he's right. And when I learn myself to stop on the half distance line, observe, 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 okay, they pass, they I continue, I have a time, then I remember all the time. And we must remember because sometimes uh, jury table uh, do this mistake, so we must uh, control if after double exclusion they reset the time. We must, no, 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 no. And even if we didn't see exactly, was it 13, 9, or 10? Usually referees say, okay, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Believe me, if you say 12 or 11, this means I'm sure it was 11. <laughs> 10, 20, okay, probably. Tell 11, 14, and then restart the game. <laughs>